Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, Antioch Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Saturday, July 17th, 2021, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 3, verses 23 through 29, and chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. Brethren, before faith came, we were confined under the law, kept under restraint until faith should be revealed so that the law was our custodian until Christ came, that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a custodian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are one, all one, in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offspring, Heirs according to the promise. I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no better than a slave, though he is the owner of all the estate, but he is under guardians and trustees until the date is set by the father. So with us, when we were children, we were slaves to the elemental spirits of the universe. But when the time had fully come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And today's gospel reading is from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 5, verses 24 through 34. That time a great crowd followed Jesus and thronged him. And there was a woman who had had an issue of blood for twelve years, and who had suffered much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was no better, but rather grew worse. And when she had heard about the reports of Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched its garment. For she said, If I'm ever touched, even his garments, I shall be made well. And immediately the hemorrhage ceased, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself the power had gone forth from him, immediately turned around in the crowd, and he asked, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, knowing what had been done in her, came and fell down him trembling and said and told him all the truth and he said to her daughter your faith has made you well go in peace and be healed of your disease glory to thee our god glory to thee so today we are going to be greeted by bishop thomas at the church of saint elias and so i'd like to spend a couple of minutes this morning to talk a little bit about his visit and the nature of the bishop in the church. The bishop is actually the ruling authority in our church. The Orthodox Church is based on an Episcopal system. Episcopal actually is another word for bishop. And so in our church, we have a three level um, set of authority the bottom level of the high orders of ordination, the lowest level in terms of authority and power, is that of the diaconate. Now that word, diaconia, literally means to be a waiter, to serve tables. That's where the term comes from. If you look at the Acts of the Apostles, they speak at the time when they ordain the different deacons. They say it is not fitting for the apostles to wait upon tables. And so they appoint men of good spiritual character to be the deacons of the church. So the deacon is the lowest level of the church. And then the middle level in today's framework is the priest. And then the upper level is bishop. It used to be in days of old, way back when, if you look in the New Testament, you don't see any reference to priest as that middle level. You only see deacons and elders or overseers. By the way, overseer is the literal translation of what episcopos means. Um, epi on top of or above, and then the uh, uh, scopus, like a, a telescope or a stethoscope, something um, that amplifies with which you can see. So an overseer then is Episcopus, literally. So it used to be that the bishop would be responsible for that flock and then maybe other flocks as well. But as they had more and more responsibility, they couldn't be in every place at once. And so they appointed priests to serve in the place of the bishop 
in places where the bishop could not be on that day. So the priest has been given authority by the bishop to consecrate, that means to um, make the communion that the people of the church are able to consume, but also they have been blessed by the bishop to marry, to do funerals, to do baptisms, to do chrismations, to hear confessions, and so forth. So they have a lot of responsibilities, more so than the deacon does, but at the same time they do not have the same authority that a bishop does. The bishop is the overseer of everything, and so when the bishop is present in a priest's church, it's not the priest's church at all, it is the bishop's church. So, so this week we welcome Bishop Thomas and we look forward to having him um, feed us of his word, his knowledge, and we also look forward to his spending time with us um, because it's his church. And so we are grateful to have him with us, to be, uh, to have him present with us. And we will look forward to hearing what he has to say and spending time with him. So basically, in our church, we have um, more structure. We, in our church, um, Bishop Thomas is our diocesan bishop, but he's really an auxiliary bishop, which means his authority is not the same as a normal diocesan bishop, uh, because in our framework, we actually have a metropolitan of the entire continent, well, it's not really a continent, but of, of North America and of Canada, and his authority is the authority of those two lands, those two countries. So Bishop Thomas, he has his authority, but ultimately the authority rests on Metropolitan Joseph, who is our Metropolitan at this time. Metropolitan Joseph um, convenes with other Metropolitans in our Patriarchate um, when they gather together either in Damascus or at the Bellamand in Lebanon. And they gather around Patriarch John the Tenth. But Patriarch John the Tenth, in that case, is the first among equals within the um, Holy Synod of the Metropolitans of the Antiochian Patriarchate. And so Joseph is one of many Metropolitans throughout the world, and they would all gather together maybe once, maybe twice a year, and discuss and figure out what needs to be resolved and so forth. So all of that's very complicated, I'm sure, but the bottom line is that within our church we do um, defer all authority to the bishop, and the bishop is in accord with the Metropolitan, so what the Metropolitan's wishes are, are the things that get carried out in our parishes, and um, God willing, it's for the glory of the, um, the whole church. Bear in mind, during the liturgy, we say that great line, grant, O Lord, um, among the first, excuse me, among the first, Lord, be mindful of your um, Father and Metropolitan Joseph and our Bishop Thomas, whom thou dost grant unto thy holy churches in peace, safety, honor, health, and length of days, rightly to divide the word of truth. To divide literally means to judge. And so they are um, given the authority to decide um, the direction of the church, its moral direction, its theological direction, and so forth. So through their guidance and through their prayers, may God have mercy on us, the flock of Bishop Joseph, or excuse me, Bishop Thomas and Metropolitan Joseph. May they be granted many years, and may God bless us and keep us always. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Thank you very much for joining me today. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.